Okay, so in this one, what we're going to do is we're going to start the order process. So order is definitely going to be separate from cart. It's a little bit of a different function. Like a cart is like, think of it having it in your shopping cart when you like walk up in, in a grocery store and then you go to the, the checkout person. That checkout person starts to scan all those items. Well, we don't have to scan the items, but let's just pretend that you're in that checkout part. Well, once you're in that checkout part, like an order is starting to be formed. Now, you could also consider the cart as the first phase of that order anyway. But what we're going to do is we're going to have a checkout button here. And then that's going to go into this order that's going to have its own order ID that's going to be separate from like a Django ID. We'll actually create a custom order ID for us. Um, and then that order ID is what we'd actually send to the customer. And that would be our reference ID in general of like how we could actually tell the customer, you know, hey, your order has been shipped or... Uh, anything like that and then it's also going to attach the customer's name where we're shipping it to and kind of make that shipping invoice if you will uh, but before we really get too far ahead the order will also be handling eventually will be handling or at least the checkout process will be handling the credit card information too um, so we're going to skip the credit card information for now and we're also going to skip the adding the to address uh, the address information for any particular user now as well. So all we're going to do really is create a checkout button that's going to convert this into an order and then we're going to make assign some order ID to it. So let's actually go ahead and get started. And you're going to open up Terminal, make sure that this is open up, and Sublime Text as well. Um, so we're creating a brand new app and we're going to call it Orders. Uh, we want it to be separate. Well, there's a few reasons we want it to be separate. Number one is it makes sense to have it separate orders from cart. Cart is more functionality where order is actually starting to get into business stuff, right? It's actually getting into things you would need to do on the back end. But also um, separating the two, then you can have staff users that can only see orders, but they cannot see carts. So there's that type of thing too with permissions and stuff like that. Because in some cases, you might have somebody uh, who you don't want to see your whole back-end stuff, they just need to see orders because that's their job. All they see is orders and they shouldn't send orders, so that's all they need to see. All right, so we're going to create that app now. And we're going to just do the standard Python manage.py start app orders. All right, and what we see here is orders comes up with all of the standard start app stuff. Um, so, of course, to note, you could copy Cart's app and then rename it and then change all this stuff in here, but... It's nice to just work with something clean. That's why you would do start app orders. It's just nice and clean for us so we don't have to do a whole lot. All right, so I'm gonna open up my models for orders and I wanna keep open uh, my carts models as well. And I'm gonna close out everything else. So we just have these two things to look at. All right, so this is the carts models. So we have our cart and then cart items. So when we are assigning an order, all we really need is the cart. The specific cart is going to be associated to it. Uh, we would probably want the user, but since we haven't actually created user profiles and user authentication and all that stuff, we're going to kind of leave that out for now. We will come back to it, of course, because uh, it is a critical component. Um, so all we'll do in models uh, for orders, we will import our carts. So we'll go from carts dot models import cart All right so we're importing this cart right here in the app carts so app name models so the model in there and then import cart so now we can actually create an order that's related to this specific cart so we'll do class order and it's models dot model and we're going to take a cart in there and we'll do models dot foreign key of cart and we do not want this blank or null we definitely want if it, there's going to be an order happening it's definitely going to have a cart there's no way that it's not going to have a cart that just doesn't make sense okay so now uh, we might want the status of the order right so if they started the order right they first hit they first hit checkout but then maybe they leave but we should note that hey they hit checkout and so we have started and then maybe we could see if they abandoned it. So like they started it, but abandoned. So they just really never came back to it. 
Uh, we could give some time frame for it, but we'll just leave it as a, as a choice. And then the last one being collected or finished, like the order process was finished. So we'll just say status equals to models.char field and the max length, we'll just do 120. And then choices equals to, I'll do status choices. I'll come back to define that because you'll see that we don't have this anywhere. Uh, so we'll come back to define that. And then I'll just, I'll also have a default, which will be started. Uh, so the default option is started. All right, so that kind of makes sense. So if we create a new order, that means it's started. Um, all right, so now let's define these status choices. And this has to be a tuple of tuples. So a tuple, again, with parentheses open and closed. And then within there, we would do a tuple as well. So started, started. And one is what's stored in the database. One is what people see, but um, the, the first one's going to be stored in the database. The second one's going to be what people see. So you can actually change it, but I like to keep it kind of consistent. So uh, abandoned and then abandoned. All right, so these I'm just going to have three choices here and then collected, uh, like finished. Or actually, why don't we just say finished to follow along with started. Okay. And then don't forget these print or these commas at the end because uh, it's critical with tuples uh, on how those work. If you have any questions on tuples, you could Google Python tuples and it's spelled tuple like that or tuple is another way of uh, how it's pronounced. Um, so if you have any questions on that, that's where you would look. All right. So now that we have this, we have our order, we have our cart, we have a status. Um, we could say that it's active or not. So, um, but what we're doing here with the status is this should indicate whether or not it's still active. Um, like it's still something that's in process. Um, we could also add a choice for being process processing, but this might be a little bit separate from shipping status, right? So, so we can add other status types later to that specific order. So when I say status choices here, all this is doing is the, the status of the order itself as it relates to the user and finishing the order. It doesn't relate to shipping. It doesn't relate to anything in the processing of that actual order once it's a completed order. So that's where I'm going to keep it with that. So the status of actually completing the order itself. So maybe this should be called completion status, but I'm going to keep it as status. Um, so we can kind of go with that. All right. So now that we have this, we uh, all I'm going to do, I could, I could do a timestamp and stuff like that. But if I look at my models, uh, I see my cart has uh, a timestamp too. So I could duplicate it cause there's actually no reason not to, but at the same time, depending on how long your sessions are, the cart might be a cart for a very long time. So maybe it would be a good idea, um, to have a timestamp, uh, for the order. So we'll just leave that in. So this basically allows us to see the difference between when it was added to the cart and then also when it was actually ordered. Uh, so we could just do that in advance. And then I'll just mention right now a few things we still need to add. I'll make notes of it is we need to add a user. And then we also need to add an address, possibly. We might use a different model for it, but we might even be able to just associate it directly uh, to the order. And then we also want to add a order ID. So order ID equals to models dot char field. And I'll do max length of 120 default equals to. I'll just say ABC because um, I don't want it to be blank. And if we see it, it come through an order come through as ABC, we'll have to do some more investigating later. Now, I want to eventually make a automated way to to have some just random like characters set as my order IDs. And we'll do that when we um, actually create the like order itself. So we'll actually come back to creating the order IDs and don't get this confused with the object ID or the instance ID for the class. This is still going to be there, but that's Django specific and we don't need the user to know what that is or the customer to know what that is. They just need to know what the order ID is. And also our, our own staff or something wouldn't need to know what ID is either. They would just use order ID. 
Uh, so just keep that in mind that that will still exist. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. Um, so let's actually go ahead and add it into the database after we add our Unicode. So we'll do def Unicode self. And all I'm going to do right now is return self.orderID, uh, even though it's going to be ABC as a default. Um, okay, so now that we have this, we might also want to have one more thing with my order ID. I just realized is a unique clause. So unique equals to true. Um, so because we, we only want one order ID for, for all of the order models, right? So that's what unique will do for us is it'll make sure that this field is unique for all models uh, within this class, which is great. Okay, so we have this. Now let's sync it and add it into our database. We have to go into our settings, of course, and add it into installed apps. Uh, that's gonna be right here, installed apps. And then we add orders. And then we'll go python manage.py sync db. I have a syntax error here, so let's go see why. Uh, I already think I see what it is. I have two parentheses here. That's obviously not what it's supposed to be. So let's actually just delete one. And now let's run sync db again. There we go. Orders came through. If you scroll up a little bit, it'll say creating tables or table orders underscore order. Um, great. Um, so right away, uh, if you already forgot about this or not, right away, if I want to make changes to this, I have to use something called self. Uh, what you see here is not synced use migrations. Right, so this is synced. So if I make any changes here, it's going to throw errors. So I need it to be managed by South, which we already did with the products and cart. But I do it right away. As soon as I make my first model, I put it into South. That way I don't really have to worry about it down the line and thinking like, oh, can I make changes to this or not? I just do it Im immediately. So let's go ahead and do Python manage.py convert, convert to South. And it's going to be orders. Now, of course, we want to convert it to South after it's already synced in the database. Because if we ran this first, there might be some errors. And if we hit enter, uh, what we see is it says it assumes that the application's models match the database. So you haven't changed since last sync DB, which we haven't. Um, so what this is good. So that means that we this also assumes that we did do a sync DB and it hasn't changed at all, uh, which is perfect. OK, so now if we do Python manage.py sync DB again, Oops, spell it correctly. Uh, we see now that orders is ran by South. Okay, so let's actually add it into the admin. So I'll do from dot models import order. And I'll just do admin dot site dot register and order. Uh, this has to be lowercase. We'll come back to making customizations to it later, but Let's go and run the server and check our stuff out. Run the server. And we go into the admin. And there we go. We see orders. So this is where we would have it separate, right? So if we go in here and we add an order, we can see that we can actually select a cart now. And we can set a status for it, right? And we also have an order ID. Uh, which we will uh, have to do later. So far, we're not actually going to do that yet, but we will do this later. And also, at some point, we won't want them to, or anyone to be able to change the cart itself. And we probably won't even want to view the cart, to be honest. Uh, we might want to see the things in the cart, but we won't want to view the cart or be able to change the cart itself. And then we also want to change the order ID to be also read only so they can only read it. Because uh, we don't want us to be making any mistakes and accidentally saving, you know, a, a, the wrong cart to the wrong order and, you know, having issues there. Okay, so now that we have this stuff, um, we are pretty much ready to start actually adding in the views to handle the transaction or the process of um, converting the cart into an order. Uh, so we'll do that in the next one.